Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Supergirl Season 2, Episode 17, it's called Distant Sun, full spoilers for the episode, as always. Well, this, this was, it was mostly good. Yeah. It was mostly good, I, I think... I think obviously the big problem you may have had with this episode is that we're not particularly fond of Monel, and there is a lot of Monel. Yeah, but elements. at least this time is like he's reading Shakespeare. He's finally seen Star Wars. You know, he goes up in my estimation a little bit. I don't give a shit about that. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't give a shit about that. No, I think he is a little bit better here. He he had a couple of funny moments. Uh, that, that worked well, but again, that goes back to the saying that he, he's kind of fine when he's when he's comic relief. I don't think he did anything actually that bad in this episode. I think this episode though would have had some more effective moments had I already cared about him. Yeah, which I don't. So a couple of things felt flat. So when it got to the point where he was like sacrificing himself and going back to the some with his parents to save Supergirl, and then Supergirl was like, "We need to save him." We need to save him. I'm like, nah, you don't. Just let him go. Yeah, it's like it's nice and all, but I just, just don't care that much. So that was the biggest problem. Is that honestly, I was happy for him to just leave <laughs> when the, when the threat arrived. That was the biggest thing. Otherwise, though, I, I generally enjoyed the episode. I thought there was some fun stuff. Obviously, there's a basically. I mean, we eventually find out it's he's a it's Monel's mother, Terry Hatcher, who's done it. But there's a bounty on Kara's head. So there's a couple of like wacky alien that show up to like try and kill her. One's a telepath who makes Monel do everything. That was a very funny scene actually. Monel not being able to control his body. Yeah, and it was really satisfying when she punches him. It is, and she says sorry, and I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Punch you enjoyed him, that. Punch him again. <laughs> punch him again, <laughs> Kara. Do it. Uh, so that, that, that was good fun. Uh, although I do have to question why the telepath doesn't know that one's faking it with a stapler. Which, by the way, nice callback to Batman Begins. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... I, I... I did think the same. It's like, can you not just read his mind? Especially since, like, in the next scene, he's in the cell and Jean comes in and they have a telepath battle. And I'm like, what did Wind fight this off himself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe he was yeah. too preoccupied. Yeah, possibly, possibly. But yeah, so Manuel agrees to go when uh, when when Terry Hatcher pulls out the uh, the kryptonite sigh. It's pretty cool, to be fair. And cuts Kara with it. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, so that's all. That's all fine and well. Monel gets taken. The Kara's all for going up and rescuing him. Jean's like, no. The president says no. Well, we saw the president again. Linda Carter yeah. appeared uh, for a couple of scenes on the on the TV screen, and so they go up. And I did like the, the swerve. I like that you think it's Supergirl, and then the Kryptonite does nothing. And it's like right before yeah. it happens. Oh, it's John. Yeah, right before it happens, you get what's happening and then yeah. he, he actually does the revealing like oh okay this was a smart plan and yeah uh again because it felt like at first rules. it feels like really you're just doing the same thing you did before where you failed this doesn't seem like much of a plan yeah actually that was one of the things that i liked about this episode is that some of the character decisions which i think in some recent episodes have felt a lot, not in the last couple but i'm thinking more the the eleven to fourteen spell, where it was all yeah. the heavy Monel like relationship stuff that we weren't that keen on. Uh, there were some decisions in this one that were making a lot more sense to me. Like when they when they discover the bounty. Uh, by the way, Kara's excitement that she sees herself in the little hologram. It's, there is nothing at her face at the way she, when she looks at Bacon. Okay, sure. Also adorable. That, that is what you want at life. You want someone to look at you like she looks at Bacon. <laughs> yes. Or donuts. Or donuts, but the, this was specifically bacon. This was specifically bacon, but so like all that was fun. But the 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 moment when she's like, "No, I'm not hiding. I'm going off and I'm going to fight." And I actually like how they convinced her not to. It's like, look, we acknowledge that we cannot physically stop you from going outside, right? Mm -hmm. I might be Martian Manhunter, he might be Monel, but you can take us in a fight should the occasion arise. So we're asking you, as friends, as loved ones, to not do that. And yeah, that was good. It made more sense to me. And her, her not being stubborn enough, and her actually accepting it was good. And to be fair, her plan later on, which worked for a character, as Supergirl, to just talk to his mother, to just let's just talk to her, let's try and yeah. swear. Now, of course, we know, especially by the end of the episode, no, she's just a complete evil bitch. There is no hope for her. She is evil. She kills her husband because she feels he's gone a bit soft, and it's like, oh, Monel, you can stay because we can see you love her. And she's like, no. I, it, Ruler Adaxum here. 
he's coming yeah. back with us. Yeah. I'm going to ruin this planet. So, yeah. well, so like there was it... only one character decision that that didn't work for me. Sure. And it's it's a smaller one. It this is Jimmy. So there's the scene where it's you know where the telepath takes control of Monel. Kara's holding her own, perfectly fine, as they've already established in the previous scene. She can take him in a fight if she has to. Mm-hmm. And J- uh, Wynn gets out his little thing and goes, oh, there's someone nearby. There's a bounty hunter nearby. And Jimmy's like, I've got this. And then he just goes and tackles Monel. Yeah, Go and he... find the bounty hunter, you knob. Yeah, I thought he was going to have to the, the, the telepath as well. I, I'll admit that was a wee bit strange. I, I didn't get it. A uh, bit odd, but then Jimmy's not been shown to be the brightest of people, so you know what? No, Wynn's like, it. wait, what's he doing? Oh, Christ, I'm going to have to deal with this myself. <laughs> yeah, and Wynn goes and does it with a stapler. <laughs> like an absolute champ. Exactly. Like an absolute champ. Uh, so, no, that's fine. And what I like about the whole Terry Hatcher stuff and her being... Because you, you know she's going to kill her husband at the end. It's just, yeah. well, it was almost very similar to a scene in Arrow recently where I was almost counting down to the stabbing. Like, it was <laughs> so obvious. Yeah. But... What I like about it is that it does give this season a big bad, which it was kind of lacking before. Yeah, it's, it's really quite late in the season to only just be getting that. Yeah, we've got, what, five episodes left? Five or six, depending on how the math it's, works out? This was 17? 17. Four? Is that no, five? Five, 22. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about 20 when I was counting through them in my head. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You didn't think there was 21 episodes. You just forgot to include 20 and went straight yeah, to 21. I went 18, 19, 21, 22. <laughs> I, have, I, have no, I have no defense for that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so so we have a big bad. And I know we had obviously the Luther, uh, Lily and Luther in the first first half of the season, but she's kind of taking a back seat. She's still around, of course, to pop back up, but this feels like there's more of a an actual threat that's the end game of the season where she's going to plan a big attack and she's going to try and demolish everyone and she's going to have to kill Monel as well. Kill Monel or Monel's going to have to go back to Daxon because if he doesn't then there's no ruler and they're always going to yeah. crumble and be a bunch of I don't know rampaging people that have yeah. no, with no direction. Barbarians. <laughs> Barbarians. Barbaric yes a bunch of bar- barbaric buffoons. Aye. But no, nah, so that, that's cool. Uh, so no, I like that. I like that it says that there's actually a villain now. It is a little bit late in the season, but hopefully that gives us a little bit of focus uh, for the the overall plot. And Monel and Supergirl weren't too bad together in this episode because there was a one or two bits that were a bit too sickly sweet. But because they are just together now and they're not focusing on how should we or shouldn't we be together, which is the it's, really it's, tedious it's part. It's fine, isn't it? It's okay. It's maybe not what we want, but it's like okay, I can I can cope with this oh, yeah. no problem. It's still not what we want, and I still don't think he really won her over. Like, it, she, she just kind of started to like him for no reason. Yeah. But it's, it's not as annoying now that they've just, like, we've done it, they're together, and yeah. we get we get the odd breakfast scene, and Kara's excitement of bacon is enough to kind of carry me through. Exactly. Scene. Uh, so, Jean gets into trouble with the president, and we've seen before that she was an alien, but we see yes. like, her fully transformed. I thought she was going to go full on White Martian at the end, but she didn't quite. No. Something different, isn't it? Something different. Uh, I do want to point out, now, the effects in the show this episode were generally pretty good, but there was one moment that was cringy bad. Mm. But it was when they're on the Daxum ship, and they shoot, uh, one of them shoots the window, and one of the Daxamites goes out the window into space. He yeah. looks so bad. It was such a bad CG uh, yeah. model. Also, why does every spaceship have a manual shutter control? Why do none of them, oh, hang on, something's broken, let's automatic shut us? It just seems like poor design of flaws. Like, it's, it's not specific just to this, uh, admittedly, but uh, yeah, I always see it. It's like, look, window's broken, shutter comes down. That's it. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to assume the reason why it never comes up in any of these sci-fi, even The Expanse, which is a very, like, by the numbers. And yeah, very but, yeah but they don't have shutters. They have to manually seal it up, like, themselves with tape and bits of metal. Yeah, but then you ask, why don't they have shutters? Oh, uh, yeah. But but it, it's only an issue when they, when I see shutters, but they have to pull a switch for it. I'm going to suggest that maybe detecting that it's, ha- like it's happened is difficult. <laughs> no, it'll be a massive change in air pressure. I get that. But... This, should ju- this should just be a safety feature, like a, like a standard safety feature on every spaceship ever. It's not complicated. I wonder if there's a reason why you wouldn't have that turned on. Well, if anyone can think of one, please let me know, because <laughs> I, I can't think of any good reason not to have that on. 
To be fair, there's a much more of an issue. Why are they all the Daxamites speaking speak in English? That's a much bigger problem than that. <laughs> yeah, but we covered that one already. Yeah, I know, but I'll just say, especially in this show when they established that Krypton had its own language, which makes sense. But that that's some, oh no, they're all speaking English. <laughs> it's, it's galactic basic. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. Oh dear. Elsewhere, we had a plot with Maggie and Alex, uh, where they're into Maggie's ex, and she stands them up when Alex, because Alex tries to, like, oh, let's have a, let's have a three way. Not, not like that. Three way dinner. Dinner. Yeah. And they, and she doesn't show up, she stands them up, and it turns out. Uh, Alex goes to see her thinking oh you've been a bit of a bitch to Maggie why, why did you say she didn't deserve happiness and we find out oh wait Maggie did something bad actually kind of, she kind of in a way deserved to comment because she cheated on her yeah and uh, uh, I wasn't like I wasn't super feeling this plot but I actually kind of liked where it ended yeah it was something we brought up before as well like when yeah. uh, it was with the, the parents thing yeah, well, well, we, to we be fair, then, and Alex, then she brings it up. Alex brings that point up as well. She, that's like, okay, this happened with this, and now it's happened again with this. She brings up the two cases, t- the exact two things we would have brought up to make this yeah. argument, and she confronts her with it. So I actually liked how it ended. It was the character making the logical cho- uh, like decisions and argument based on what had happened. I agree. I felt the first scene was a little bit awkward because uh, I felt like Alex was being a bit pushy because the the other two were like they were they were being polite. It's like yeah, we should catch up, but yeah. clearly neither of them meant it. Oh like, yeah, it, yeah, it was very obvious that neither of them actually meant that. They were just being yeah, yeah, polite. And Alex was like yeah, let's do it. Let's let's have dinner. That was a that was a really weird scene. I watched Nocturnal Animals uh, last night, and I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll just say that the 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 overall point of that movie kind of relates to that scene. It does. It does. Have you seen that? I have, yeah. Sorry, I, I, know, I, I didn't realize you'd seen it. All right, never mind. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it just—you you can see why I would be like, "Wait a minute!" Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like the whole movie, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the territory here. Uh, but no, nah, I liked how it ended. Uh, uh, the, the scenes leading up to it were hit and miss for me, but they do have good chemistry together, so that was nice. And I, I did like that it didn't become a jealousy thing, or even once she found out that Maggie had cheated on her ex, it didn't become a "Oh, I'm worried that she's going to cheat on me now." thing like, yeah, i was worried that, it was going to go down that, that route. would have been kind of irritating nah but no she, she goes to the thing that makes the most sense and is not annoying it's i this is the second time you have not told me something that you should feel comfortable telling me about so yeah it's ah, it, 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 it ended well i just feel like the overall plot itself was a bit contrived yeah a bit contrived it was so, something just very forceful about it especially when like mm, like alex like is going to cancel it because she has stuff to do. Because, you know, her sister's got a bounty on her head. But then, yeah. like, when's like, oh, no, just go. I can deal with it. It's like, oh, would, would you? <laughs> yeah, but Wynn's still the MVP, once again. There, he's like, oh, yeah, I'll just take care of it all. Well, he takes down a telepath. He he reconfigures the teleporter from the, the Slaver Moon to teleport into any place he wants and calculates it. <laughs> Joe, I, I actually have a little problem with that as well. Like, the first one, the first jump, Mm-hmm. Absolutely buy it because he talks about the the math he has to do, you know, like get in the 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 spaceship has to be in the right place, and then he has to calculate where it is on Earth given mm-hmm. Earth's moving, and then what does it, it just continue the calculation like extrapolate permanently? Because when Kara then goes up, it still works. Does it not have to recalculate? Does he not have to recalculate where Earth is in relation? Um, well, it does, but I think it could, it could continually run. Like yeah. once you've established how far it is, and because the Earth spinning and the Earth moving, moving is on a trajectory, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's never it's never random. You can predict where it's going to be in X yeah. amount of time. And given that it's all within about ten minutes of each other, is uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. I, I don't know. It's a, who cares? Like you're really you're, you're digging into uh, science of this. It's, uh, it's not. It doesn't bother me anywhere near as much as the shutters do. <laughs> it's, it's not worth going into this, really. It's not. Uh, the the Star Wars reference was pretty was pretty good because it, it cheered up when he'd finally watched Star Wars. The Romeo and Juliet stuff was kind of amusing as well because he mispronounces Romeo as Romeo, I think he said. Romeo. Romeo. And uh, he keeps saying, oh, we're like them. And then Kara's like, they die at the end. Stop comparing us to Romeo and Juliet. And I'm like, yeah, compare yourself to him. Die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just don't take her with you. Oh dear. Uh, so yeah, no, 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 it was a, uh, it was, it was a fun episode. I, I think, I think it was a solid episode that was just held back slightly by the fact that I don't really care about Monel 
and I'd be okay for him to leave. Yeah, but, I feel like if you care about Monel, this would be a really good episode. Yeah, but unfortunately, I don't. And he didn't do anything to bother me in this one specifically, because, again, much like last time when I said he was kind of saying the right things, finally, in this one he was like, all right, if I'm going back to Daxum, then we're going to do this differently. We're not going to be this, you know, empirical, tyranny-based yeah. royalty. We're going to change things, we're going to give people rights, and we're going to... Do, like, at least he is trying to do things beyond. And he does do it to save Kara, which, again, I like Kara, so I can appreciate the gesture, at the very least. Yeah. So, no, so he's, he's making baby steps, but I still don't necessarily like him that much. Yeah. Beyond comedy. That, that, that's fair. So, there we go. So, uh, bye, Sorbo. Nice to having you. Yeah. You're gone. He's, ne- he's never as big as a drawer as Hatcher, was he? Nah. So now, now Hatch has got her sigh, her crypt, kryptonite sigh, and uh, she's cu- coming for coming for Kara. And probably the whole plan, she probably just wants to destroy the whole thing now. She's just pissed. Yeah, she does seem pretty angry. Yeah, just, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of a tizzy. Anyway, uh, I'm not entirely sure where the, the president plot's going. I'm not sure either. I'm wondering if she's in cahoots with uh, the Daxamites, because the way she didn't want them to conf- you know, confront the ship, she's like, no, under no yeah. circumstances, attack them. Yeah, that could be it. So it just—it feels like it's a separate thing right now. I wonder if it's just a seed for season three. Like maybe they've got a plan for season three, and the president's just in this season to sort of just kind of, kind of like how uh, like in Buffy season two, they mentioned the mayor a few times throughout the season, but mm. that was a season three plot. It was just kind of yeah, yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, and I brought up Buffy, so this is now officially a win of a of an episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Let us know what you thought of this episode of Supergirl in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Quick thing before we go. You'll notice this was a bit later in the day than normal. Uh, that'll be similar again with the Flash and Legends for tomorrow. It'll be sometime tomorrow, uh, a bit later like this. Maybe even a bit later than this one was. Uh, just just a bit of warning. Just the way schedules worked out this week. That's how it's that's how it's gone down. So, yeah. Uh, get us on Twitter, mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. Uh, individual Twitters are on the screen for everyday ramblings. Thanks for watching, guys. Have you got any vanilla?